Hey guys, it's Mr. Jung Triple Zero here on my 10th anniversary, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Mako Chrono SEMA Edition. This truck is a heavily modified version of the Chrono made for the 1999 Specialty Equipment Market Association or SEMA Auto Show. The highlight about this truck is that it's lifted way off the ground compared to your average pickup truck to go along with the lifted truck trend. While it's a pain to get in, it's also a great off-roader and garage roof killer because of its ridiculous ride height. The body that I've used to make this skyscraper of a truck is made by a modder named Gizmo Props in his 78's Top Keck mod file. The link is at the bottom of the description and in the Automation Steam Workshop if you want to download it. It has a lap time of 1 minute 51 seconds 39 milliseconds at the quote unquote top gear test track and 3 minutes 2 seconds 99 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 96.3 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 13.5 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a slightly tuned version of Ford's Triton V10 engine that produces 309.7 horsepower and 394.1 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of a California roasting 5.1 miles per gallon and weighs 8,595.9 pounds or 3,899 kilograms. And for the market, it's an excellent competitor in the utility premium car market, but it falls apart in the other three markets here, which are the off-road premium, luxury, and muscle car markets. In terms of how I made the Chrono SEMA truck, the panel material will be made out of treated steel of a light truck monocoque chassis made out of galvanized steel. With a front longitudinal engine placement and the front suspension uses a solid axle coil and the rear suspension uses a multi-link suspension. For the engine, it's a V90 degree V10 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to 90.2 millimeters and a stroke at 105.8 millimeters, which gets it up to 6,761 cubic centimeters, around 6.8 liters, which is the Triton's actual size, with single overhead cam 2 valves made out of aluminum. For a crank, it's made out of forged steel with cast con rods because I don't know what the con rods what they actually use in a Triton, and it uses a hyperutetic cast pistons. It's pretty interesting. For the compression, it uses a somewhat of a normal 9.2 to 1 ratio with a cam profile set to a fairly normal 24. For the fuel system, it uses a multipoint EFI of a single configuration with a standard intake running on regular fuel, with the fuel mixture set to a 13.4. The ignition timing jumped up a little bit to a 57, and the RPM limit is set to the maximum of 5200 RPM, which is its real life RPM limit. For the headers, we're using short cast headers with a dual exhaust setup, with the exhaust diameter set to 63.5 millimeters, which is around 2.5 inches. And also ignore this, this is pretty interesting how the exhaust system is set up on here. <laughs> For the catalytic converter, we're using a three-way catalytic converter with the first buffer at reverse fall, the second one, that doesn't exist whatsoever. For the drive type, we're using a 4x4 setup with an advanced automatic 5-speed with the top speed set to a 98.2 miles per hour, and it's got a manual locker to basically kill the Chevy Silverado. For the tires, they are maxed out with some chunky off-road tires with the tire lift set to 395 millimeters with the front and back, which is the maximum you can put on here, with some big-ass 1500, I think, millimeter-sized tires with a diameter, and we're running on some 42-inch steel rims. For the brakes, they're maxed out with their solid disc brakes with the size set at 420 millimeters with the pad type set to a racing setting, even though what kind of sucks about the brakes that the fronts are not that powerful on here, but the rear are powerful as it could possibly be the front, not so much. For the inner tray, who really cares about this? Off-road skid tray, next for the interior. We got ourselves a five-seater with a handmade interior and a luxury CD player. For the steering, it's got a variable hydraulic power steering with electronic stability control, which is over the top for a 90s vehicle, and it uses a 1990s standard safety standards. And last but not least, for the suspension, it's got standard springs of gas monotube dampers with passive sway bars running on an off-road preset. Despite only three problems on here, such as the front brake force being too low and the both front and rear tires being super wide as the wide Putin meme, let's go to BMG Drive and test this monstrosity of a truck out. 
So here we are at the map of East Coast USA and taking a look at this big ass truck here. Starting with the rear end, nothing that much. Got your basic standard issue taillights like you see on a Ford F-150 from the 90s or whatever with the words Mako, which is the manufacturer's name. And what's even more interesting, instead of a basic exhaust pipe that goes on the bottom, you got these freaking smokestack exhausts so you can roll coal on everybody. And even with the paint jobs and automation going to BMG Drive, we lost the pearlescent paint and including the rim, so instead of like, having a, like, a rose gold pink looking pearlescent paint job, now it's just flat out pink. <laughs> and also, here's our boy Chrono with the V10 badge, and looking at the front, this kind of looks somewhat reminiscent to my other build with this type of truck body, with the Super Stretch XXL, but instead of having a vertical lighting setup with these chrome trim right here, that vehicle had basically L-shaped headlights, but instead with this build, three lights here, one headlight, this headlight, and a turn signal with this big-ass grill here of a chrome piece. And going into the interior, you got these here seats, brown leather seats, with a uh, pretty reminiscent but somewhat relevant dashboard, steering wheel, and a freaking CD player right here that lost all of its colors and textures, preferably the colors and a square-ass center console with an e-brake, gear shifter, four-wheel drive locking system, and a couple of cup holders. Hopefully you are sold with this vehicle. So that's pretty much it about this vehicle. It's big as hell, and it's basically an attack on car culture with this freaking lifted truck here. So right now, while I'm at it, with the truck stopped here, we're about to be doing some basic performance tests with this vehicle. For our basic performance test, the first we're going to be doing is a 0-62 to 62 acceleration test, Next off will be a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run, which I have some doubts of this vehicle being almost 9,000 pounds of a 300 something horsepower Triton V10 engine, but I do have hopes that it could reach its top speed. So, right now, hit the accelerator to start our acceleration test now. Hitting the gas, that dip in the rear suspension, going to second gear, third gear, we're basically flying through these gears here because it's a, uh, a 6-speed, I believe. I think it's what a 6-speed. So 0 to 62 and 9.68 seconds of 564.92 feet. Seems okay. So for a, um, a brake test, wait till it hits 62. I think we're okay. No, we're losing speed. Give me a second. All right, here we go now. 62 to 0 brake test underway and zeroed out. 62 to 0 and 4.06 seconds of 177.64 feet. That's kind of bad in terms of time. Distance-wise, I'm kind of half and half on that, but take it four seconds to stop, not that great. So for the top speed run, get rid of ECS and trash control, which I don't know why I added on here, and just go again. I think locking the diffs right here, does it make it go to 4x4 or my... Oh, drive shaft, that's what makes it go to two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. I don't know about these two. I don't know if that really makes a difference in improving the acceleration or anything of the vehicle, but I don't know. 90 miles an hour... And just like that, with this little stretch of highway, 95, and wait for the red line, and red line, reach top speed. Oh my god. <laughs> I about chipped over right there, but there we go. We crashed the vehicle. I was about to slow it down, but whatever. Impact detected stopping car. Oh, preferably, it's a truck. Thank you very much. And can I free this or not? If not, I could just F7 it somewhere and I forgot the seat's got the J-beam structure, so there goes the passenger seat in the frickin' river down below. Get it upright and it's stuck. There goes another seat. So let's F7 it somewhere, it's like right here. So F7 it right here. Take a look at the aftermath destruction of the vehicle. And yes, we lost both front wheels because of that collision, because of me nearly tipping over of a high center of gravity with this vehicle being way high off the ground and taking a sharp corner, which is basically a recipe for disaster, this type of vehicle. So the sides, not too much, including the front. How about the rear? Oh, man. That's where I got stuck on the bridge support right there. Is this your piece? And we got a big ass hole right here through the body, I believe. Is this a hole or... Yes, you can call it a hole because you can see it peaked out right here, which is pretty interesting. How about the interior? We lost a... Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, oh. Yep. Can I... Oh, yeah. We lost the seat, and we got the dashboard in our face. So we lost, also lost all the seats of the vehicle, so that sucks. And while I'm at it, instead of going to time trial right now, let's spawn another vehicle to see what it's like crushing another vehicle here. Let's find a, uh, a relevant car. Let's use the ETK I-Series and just crush this guy at a high speed. Because when you got this lifted truck, you gotta do some crushing and this thing's on its side. 
you gotta do some crushing and off-roading with this particular vehicle. So let's just recover right here. You know, let's just do it on its side. So make a perpendicular, do it right here, recover, go to the chrono and accelerate right now and try to crush the ETK Ice Series just up ahead. And I think when I crash it at the speed we're about to be going, probably highway speeds of 60, 60 miles an hour, probably 59 roughly. So eight times slow-mo. Get a camera right here, hide the UI, eight times slow-mo, go. 58 miles an hour, crushes it, flatten the left side, the front wheels are up, and they're about to be going over. So let's go back to record cam and just take a look at the back wheels of this vehicle. So we'll keep on steering and go to full time. And like that, the truck seems okay. Let's take, take, take a look at the front. Uh <laughs> Just some minor front end damage, but nothing much. How about the ETK? Oh my god, engine broken. Yo, look at the left side of this damn thing. Yo, the left side got smooshed in pretty good. I mean, really, really good here. How about the interior? Hmm, yeah, the freaking pillar's up in my head, so we've been decapitated by this vehicle. So what about the Corona with this truck here? Let's accelerate and just see what it's like. So accelerating right off the bat, we're pulling to the right. We're auto steering to the right, but... In other words, it drives okay. Yes, this drives okay after smashing into the side of an ETK at 62 miles an hour. So it crashes right here, and probably impact detected stopping car, probably spawn another one in. Let's use an SUV for the heck of it. Let's bring out the hopper, and then take this down to a time trial. Let's use a uh, slightly beefier version. Let's use, let's use the custom model, and try to run on the side of it like I did with this ETK here. All right, here we go on the way, 58 miles an hour. And let's keep the camera as is. And same thing, eight times slow-mo, hide the UI and camera, good, go. So front end collision and holy crap, there goes the body and the chassis. And <laughs> damn, this is so brutal. So go back to full time for grinding and we're up to a stop, can I reverse? Can the 4x4 system do its job? We got the frame of the vehicle on the back of the wheels here. Okay, let's see. Radiator. Are you kidding me? Radiator leaking. This can't be. You know what? Um, That's tilde. Let's shut the engine off and just accelerate because I want to see if this thing can drive without starving the engine because the vehicle is upside down and it appears I can't get this to go. Can I launch? Forward launch? No. Reverse launch? Also a no, or maybe, maybe I'm going, going, but we're like terminally stuck here. This is not good whatsoever. And there goes that, you know, let's try to separate this. Let's F7, the chrono right here and get the hopper back upright. And here is the hopper. Can it go or can it restart the engine? Can the engine start up? Give me a push start, please. So you got the entirety of the body exposed here. Add the transmission, engine, the front here. Can I remove the front? Or, uh, let's not risk it before I break the engine. All right, I'm giving it a push start. Just like Patrick says, just scream, push the top of your lungs to move bikini bottom over. Going 280 miles an hour, wind speed, and it ain't doing a damn thing. Uh, drive shaft broken, axle broken, who cares, it's dead. So right now, we're about to be doing a time trial run here at this map here of East Coast USA with the Off-Road Trail 1 layout with this here chrono. And it's a point-to-point -point race, so it's only one lap and we'll be racing at the noon hour. So take you to the starting line of this here off-road track right now. So here I am at the starting line with no start and finish line to be seen anywhere, but this Telfo pull up to my left and the checkpoint right up here, like another 100 feet away from this vehicle. So get ready to start this here off-road type trial here in three, two, one, go. And why was the speedometer showing like five miles an hour when I was at a standstill? It's pretty interesting. And I don't know how this would work going off-road. I mean, we got a four by four and we're struggling. We're struggling with some near 50 inch tires and they're wide as hell and I'm about as wide as the entire trail here. This is gonna be pretty dicey. I gotta pretty much see where the hell I'm going because this vehicle is so massive that I can't really see where I'm like really going. I can't see like the side of me, what's on the ground, what's pretty much everywhere. And how about here? Let's get a take a look here and we're about as wide as these two uh, barriers here. How about this uphill? Can I have to go to low range or 
barely in high range. I might as well have to stick it in the low range and go back to the interior view and... Oh no. Can I get past here? This is the part where you might flip over and basically call it quits. No, I'm okay. This is pretty... <laughs> impractical of an off-roader. This is more of a show truck than an off-road truck. If you have, like, some wide-ass trailers compared to this guy, you'll be okay. These trailers, no. These trailers are basically fit for a compact, more basically genuine off-road vehicle, like a D-Series, Hopper, Roamer, whatever. And those rocks almost killed those tires. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Stop everything. Am I gonna free myself, or no, I'm half and half. If I make the wrong move, I'm going down the side of the hill. Alright, so just back it up, back it up like little John says. Back it up. Accelerate, cop over a couple rocks, and we're okay. Sheesh, that was so close. Okay, I think this is even more dicey. This is even- oh man. This is so narrow that a wrong move, a simple wrong turn, or wrong whatever, you're basically off at the edge of that hill there, and basically plummet to the ocean. Okay, now it's all blue, so we're about to be done here. So this left turn, back on asphalt, we get a time of 3 minutes, 48 seconds, 970 milliseconds. That's mediocre, especially with this big ass of a truck. So go to free roam, and it's suffering. And right now, the vehicle is auto-steering very, very hard to the left because of me hitting the rock so hard with this vehicle. We'll just basically crash at high speed and find a tree, like, off to my right here, at this bus shelter here, where you spawn right here. Is this- is this solid? Yes, it's solid. There goes the front wheels, the seats, the drivetrain, everything. Real time says that. There goes that seat right here. So take a look at the aftermath destruction. We got the back wheels okay, the rear's been shifted upward, there goes the big-ass tire. Can I fling this back at the vehicle at a very high speed? Do it. Nice, it's assault. So it's kind of weird how the rear is basically heavily damaged. The front end made some little freaking Mike Wazowski kissy lips thing from Monsters, Inc. or something. Well, not really. And everything else is just heavily damaged. Inside, you got the center console and the handbrake basically turned into a big-ass knife. So don't touch that, kids. And for the heck of it, let's do one more on here. Let's do the dirt track here and do a few laps of this before... Oh, that's free roam. Shoot. Okay, what I meant to do is here, off-road circuit... Three laps in the early noon hours with the Chrono SEMA Edition truck. So I don't know how it's going to hold up. Let's find out here by going to the starting line of the off-road circuit right now. All right, here we are underneath a gantry right here, or uh, a catwalk right here with the SEMA truck that's lifted off the ground and basically built for pure off-roading, like wide, wide open off-roading. But this is a circuit, not an off-road trail. But anyways, let's ignore that and get ready to start this here time trial off in three, two, one. It's still going off go. It's pretty weird how it's in neutral and the speed is going like eight miles an hour, seven miles an hour, whatever. And let's just roll with an interior view with this here truck there. And that was kind of a bad turn right there and into jump. And I'm also kind of worried about those gantries right there. If I make a jump, I don't know if I'm going to, like, hit the top of the gantry with the roof to, uh, basically end this truck's career and, uh, basically destroy the truck's roof by hitting the gantry with the truck. And that was a big jump. How about this here jump? Go to regular cam. Ooh, barely. Oh, shoot. I got to turn. Uh, save me, gravity. Thanks. Well, we're okay. A little scrape doesn't mean nothing to me. I also kind of noticed, like, look off to my right and look at the size of this vehicle. I'm about as tall as the freaking bank right there, the, uh, the end of the ramp, the jump portion of the circuit. That tells you how tall this vehicle is. It's basically, it's a sky's the limit with this vehicle body mod. Like, with this vehicle body mod, you can basically adjust the height of the vehicle, which I think this is the only mod you could do with the vehicle without just adjusting the right height, and that's it. Well, you can adjust the right height for any automation vehicle, but this particular body mod, you can adjust... Oh, shoot. Damn it. We lost the seats and lost the, uh, shoot. I can't get myself upright. Can I? Can I just maximum destruction grave digger this to just get myself upright? All right. Oh, wait, wait. Shoot, I almost had it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nice. Finally, I had to lock all the differentials to do that. Since I can't make the jump, I gotta turn around and basically get a high speed to jump over the jump. So I believe the target speed is like 50-something miles an hour. There goes all the seats and whatever that is, and barely made the jump. I think 50 is the target speed we have to clear to make the jump right there. So 50 or less, 
it's game over. If I probably hit it like 40 miles an hour, then the front of the vehicle will just basically just shatter and the front tires will be gone. Thus making the vehicle immobile. Oh shoot, not- God damn it! Not again! Right when I went to an interior camera, this is what happened. And can I do this like I did before? The front- Damn, that front suspension just dipped when I got the vehicle going in reverse. And now we're sitting sideways. Come on, wall. Wally. Bastard. Damn, look how fast we're going. I went like 10 miles an hour. 13 just going in circles and having a seizure up in here. And nice. I just, the only big perk about this vehicle, these big ass wheels, lifted suspension that you could basically get this upright. No problem. And now we're there, our only best time will be a 1 minute 9 seconds, 477 milliseconds. Look at the split time, 41 second difference. That is just laughable, man. So just keep it slow from now on. Basically just use the banking of the corners just to uh, basically let the car come to you and reduce the chances of the vehicle just tipping over, thus flipping it over and doing some of that little monster jam type of get up stuff. And hopefully this interior camera won't give me another bad luck charm. So begin to steer. 45, and 48 upon jump. Barely, barely got over. Probably got all four at the little uh, end of the jump there. So coming up out of the final corner here, we get this lap time. I think like a 150, 48 or something. Let's see. 1 minute, 47 seconds, 681 milliseconds was a total time of 5 minutes, 41 seconds, 255 milliseconds. That's pretty bad. So let's end its misery here in an interior camera. Mm, didn't do that great, but who cares? Front left brake damage. Let's do some, uh, let's do some of that fun stuff. Where's that fun stuff? Tires. Yeah! Brake. There we go. Now, we pretty much ended the vehicle's misery. Broke everything, so that is it with the vehicle. And last part of the video here, let's see if this truck could go even higher, much higher than it is right now at Car Jump Arena to outperform every SEMA truck in the world. All right, so here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena. I'm just over the line. Wait for the lights to go off. So we got a two light, three light, four light, five light. Wait for it for the green and go. There we go. Now we're off to go. 50 mile an hour speed limit or 50 kilometer mile, or 50 kilometer per hour speed limit, whatever. And we got a better zero to 62 time of 5.94 seconds of 238.80 feet red line. And we're basically turning to a Formula One engine. So exit speed, 130 miles an hour and kind of nailed it right then and there and we're about to flip over don't do this to me don't do this and we're about to do it no we're not surprisingly there goes a tire i don't know where that tire is going so dump ourselves in the pool and just like that we're in the pool and where's the tire going it's gonna did that tire just screech at the top of the roof there and it's going to the stands no it's not goodbye tire and surprisingly this vehicle not a whole lot of damage whatsoever if you look at it for the awkward landing, it just basically broke the front right wheel, and yeah, that's everything. I'm shocked. How about we try this again, but basically, like, break at the last second to go end over end over end and basically cause even more destruction. So let's go to neutral right here, so we're not going to blow up the engine, and basically break it around, uh, now. Break. And break again. Here we go, here we go. Now we're talking. Right? On our roof? Can we get a flip going? Eh, good enough. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That the front's gone into the sand here. End over end. Gonna be doing some of that back grinding into the pole and into the lifeguard tower we go. So even more destruction, more pieces flying out compared to the last collision, the last jump. Somewhat underwhelming, but who even cares about that? So the aftermath, you got the front end destroyed and we got the chrome piece sticking out way far than it's ever gotten. Sides, not so much. Rear, not a whole lot, but you got this bendy piece here, the polygon. And the right, not a whole lot. Interior, we got all the seats gone, the steering wheels collapsed, center console, and yeah, that's it with the vehicle. Alright, so the last part of the video, let's accelerate right now and get a crash test going, preferably a high-speed crash test going at the last bridge pillar at this here bridge. I think the top speed we're going to be going, crashing at the last bridge pillar, will be like, probably about 120, so past the first one. We have the second one right now, so get ourselves in line, pop the curb a little, do some of that Dodge Viper styling right here, and 113 miles an hour is the speed. We're about to be crashing into this bridge pillar. So get the UI hidden and go to 16 times slow mo, and kablowie, there goes the front, the wheels too, the seats, the
the trim, the bumpers, the everything, and that seat there too. So full-time Solmo, or full-time mode, I meant. And there it is. So can I free this? Yes, I can. So taking a look at the aftermath of destruction of this vehicle, we smooshed this up pretty good, really good, to be honest with you. We got the back end propped up, and the front end just smooshed down, compacted this down to a K truck, as you see in Japan and elsewhere. The front end's been basically smooshed down, almost flattened almost. Left side, just about as bad as the, the right side. The rear end, oh yeah. The interior, oh man, they're all dead. No cap. So that'll do it with automation and BBG drive with the Mako Chrono SEMA edition. This kind of truck is somewhat dangerous to drive off-roads, but on the road, you're gonna crush a car without a doubt. Like you seen earlier with the ETK and the hopper, it just obliterated them and basically just drove off like it was nothing. But if you're gonna take this off-road, don't even do it because you have a good chance of driving this down the side of a mountain, a hill, into a lava pit, or wherever. So kids, keep it out of the streets or in a car show. That's pretty much the only use for this type of truck here because it's a lifted SEMA truck, so... <laughs> It's pretty much common sense to keep this at a car show, and that's pretty much it. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this has been Mr. Dragon Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.